Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and today we're going to have a slightly different video and I'm doing it handheld so it's going to have the shakes. So last week I posted that uh, I was doing a boutique duplication service which I've called the Cassette Comeback SSQ for single speed quality. And what this means is that basically if you're a new artist looking for a cassette release, a low production one, or if you just want something a little bit special maybe as a Halo product, or you want something good for the true fans to supplement your regular cassette run, you could have some SSQ cassettes. And what's that all about? Well, basically, it means that I'll be duplicating the cassettes on quality new old stock cassettes in three head decks at single speed. And that makes a difference to how they sound. Someone commented, and it wasn't me, but commented that most duplicated cassettes sound like they fell out of a Happy Meal. I'm not slagging off people who are doing duplication. They're doing a great job uh, under increasingly hard circumstances because getting the tape is harder and harder. And, you know, it is what it is. They managed to whack out these copies at a price that allows cassettes to flourish. It really does. If we didn't have them, cassettes wouldn't be flourishing. So I'm not knocking them. It is what it is. But like everything, there are different levels and the quality of the SSQ cassettes is just so much better. You know, it's the way it goes. Better tapes and better decks done at single speed. I mean, some of these duplicated copies are done at 96 times speed. So that means that a C90 like these will get done in less than 30 seconds. You know, it, it does have an impact on the quality. So this isn't something for everyone because I don't want to do massive runs, 25 maximum, but it's a service I'm enjoying doing and it's taken off really well considering it's only been going for a week. I've already just finished my third order and I've got more to do. But when I posted these decks, you guys asked about them and asked me to do a video on them. So I'm going to, and these are the decks I've chosen for this service. It's the Marantz PMD 520. So why did I choose these decks? Well, as you may have noticed, the three head decks, but they're dual three head decks. So I've got basically six three head decks in nine U of rack space, and that's pretty good. Now I've opened them up and inside the decks themselves are fully independent. They're not sharing motors. They're not sharing any sort of gears or uh, any sort of belts. They are fully independent decks. The motherboard's a bit sparse, but it's late. You know, it's a late deck this, you know, electronics had got a lot better by this time and everything was easy to get at. But if we look, each deck has got four screws inside the well. And this makes maintenance easy. Even I think I should be able to replace the belts on these if needed. Not that they need to be used, uh, done right now, because, you know, these I bought as brand new and I've been running my copies off and they're working fantastically. But these decks were designed to be used in radio stations and in music studios, from what I can tell. And there's certain things about them which, which play into that. For a start, if we look here, you see that button? It says CONT. I'm not swearing. It stands for CONTINUOUS. So what it means is you can start this deck recording here, and then I think it's about a minute to go, this deck will start recording because you can set the tape time on each deck so it has a rough dimmit of what it is it's going to be and that means that you can constantly have a copy and this was used by radio stations before digital came in to make sure that they had archive copies for legal purposes so that was one of the main reasons that they used this deck and therefore the decks had to be pretty well made because they were on 24 7 doing this and uh, yeah these are really well built I like that I mean it's like the buttons are buttons they're like Bakelite, but they're micro switched and lovely and firm. You know, and they light up and everything. It's, yeah, everything about this solenoid driven, it's really well made. And if we look at the front panel, we can see some more things. So we've got the display here. Now, Dolby BC and HX Pro, it's independent for each deck. You know, tape times, reset, it's independent. Because like I said, they are two independent decks. B and C, no one's asked for any Dolby on any of the releases so far, which is cool. But if we look, we've got the monitor buttons because 
the R3 head decks, bias reset I'll go into, the continuous button that we've already talked about, tape speed high and norm. Now what this means is, norm is what it is, high allows for high speed dubbing and for example in this setup here I could designate this deck here to be the master and all five of the slaves if I was duplicating from tape but I'm not uh, because of the way it is people are sending me digital files so you know they're coming out through my deck here into here and all six are acting like slave decks because the way you can set this up is if you put the input into the deck A input there's a little switch on the back that says AB and that means anything coming into input of deck A also gets mimicked to deck B so you have three inputs in but all six decks are actually being fed it which is really good but if you don't want to do that and you have the tape speed as high it's not just for high speed dubbing, you can actually record at double speed, you know like the UMIG decks did and some high end decks. I can put the signal into here from the digital output and I can record this at double speed which gives better quality. I don't know why you'd want to do this because chances are you'd only be able to play it back on this deck because if the other deck you're playing it back on the speed is out it's not going to sound right but if for example you wanted to master to cassette then you can master a double speed cassette on this which is a really nice feature that both decks can do and speaking of speed what I like is this at the front we've got two little holes here for fine speed so you can put your calibration tape in listen to it and if it's a little bit out just shove a screwdriver in there one for each deck and tweak the speed I only had to do minimal when I got these because they are brand new and been looked after and stored well but it's nice to know that it's there and this is like a feature for you know industrial stuff that you can do this likewise a balance in case you've got a deck uh, sorry a tape that isn't quite balancing right then you can you can tweak it right there on the front also you've got your master inputs the ret level is settable independently for each deck you've got timed record and play if you want uh, but other than that yeah I mean, I don't like these. These are not accurate enough for me, these VU meters. And I don't like the way that it doesn't show you any indication that it's recognised what cassette type is in there, just in case in the future the biasing doesn't work. But other than that, very impressive deck. So let's, let's switch them all on. And let's show you how it all works. Now, it's all hung together with this Superscope WRC220. And this is a remote control unit, it's daisy chained. There's dedicated inputs and it goes into this deck and it goes out of this deck into this deck and then out of this deck into this deck. So all six decks are controlled by this. And you've got basically deck A, which is the left-hand side, deck B, the right-hand side, and you've got CD if you've got a compatible CD player, I don't. So we're gonna to go to deck A. So let's just bias up these, because it does have an auto calibration on it. And the auto calibration, I mean, you know, I've, I've got other decks which have tones in it and it's usually like 400 hertz for level and then one kilohertz for bias. This goes through a very, very labor intensive biasing process. It's very thorough using lots of different tones at different levels and the results it's giving are brilliant. I mean, these are late decks. These sort of give a, an idea of what would have happened if cassette decks had continued with modern technology. Because the biasing process in this, I mean, okay, so let's fast forward all the decks at once. So I'm just gonna press the fast forward button and all three decks are going. That's enough, stop, press auto bias. Ah, uh, I know what I've done wrong here. Just bear with me a second, I know what I've done because I've still got this on high speed. Let's set this to normal speed. Right, okay, let's try that again. So rewind all of them, fast forward them a bit. Stop, auto bias. Okay, and these are the bias chip tones, but I don't know if you can hear that, but like I said, they, uh, it's very thorough the biasing in this.
Okay, they all finished at the same time. None of them have come up with an error. Goody gumdrops. Right, let's rewind them. Okay, now flick it over to tape B. Fast forward them. Stop. Let these bias. You have to do the uh, the tape A and B separately because it looks like there's only one set of bias circuits in this. So, uh, well, it's it's different for each step, but only you can only bias one side at a time. So, just let's go through it. Incidentally, love the headphone outputs. The headphone outputs, if you look, apart from having level on them, you can also select between deck A, deck B, and listen to both deck A and B at the same time, which seems to give sort of a a phased effect, but we'll we'll hear that anyway. Like I said, it's a very laboured, uh, it's the slowest three head bison I've ever seen, but it seems to be thorough and it works well. Okay, so deck B's are all done. Let's rewind all of them. Okay, they're all rewound. Let's just reset all of the... I don't know why, it's just a thing I like to reset them all. Okay, right, we're all ready. So all we do now is we've got this A, B rec, which is also on here. But A, B rec is on there. You press that and all of the decks are now primed to record. So all I've got to do now is press A, B rec again and they shall all fire off. Okay, let's just, I'm monitoring this deck here, so let's listen to the monitoring it. Okay, let's fire off, excuse me, a tune. So I'll press the monitor button on all of these so I can monitor them. So I'm listening to deck B now, I can switch it over to deck A. See, that's them um, running together and it sounds phased as A and B, but I switch over to A, and now listen to deck A. And then obviously I can unplug it and put it in a different deck. There we go, it's deck A up here. And then I can switch over to deck B. And compare deck B with the source. You can't hear it much through this microphone, but and there we go. That's how it works. And then you press stop. And they all stop. So yeah, I mean, all I do is I keep unplugging this and randomly putting it in the decks and just having a listen while I go through it just to make sure that everything sounds tickety-boo. And yeah, it works brilliant. Now, I just want to show you just the, the high speed bit. If I change this over to high speed now and record, look how fast that's running. So let's, whoops, put this in there. Turn the volume down. But this is now recording at double speed. It sounds pretty good to me. Would be if we put it on the monitor button, but yeah. But the main thing is, let me just stop the music. is if I crank this up a bit, the relative amount of hiss compared to normal speed. No, it's still hiss, but yeah, double speed recording. So if I rewind this a bit now, you can see here that it's recorded at double speed. If I turn this to normal speed again now, we can hear that it's much slower. Put 
put it back into high speed again. And there we go, and then all of the decks, they're all done. Select tape A, rewind, and all the decks on the right hand side, rewind. Check the bottom of the one right has been obviously used a bit more, and then deck B, rewind them all again. And voila, it's done. Incidentally, uh, the speakers I'm using, I really rate these. I've been using a pair of these, the smaller ones with the single Kevlar tweeter uh, with my PC for years and they're brilliant. And these are just so good. The Creative Labs, I forget the, uh, the actual model, but these are so good for standalone, for the size of them. I mean, you know, people were saying, oh, to monitor this properly, you need clip speakers with a Macintosh file bump. No, you don't. These actually work fantastic for this setup and they sound brilliant. So if you want some nice tidy desktop speakers for about 100 quid, uh, get some of them. I really, really recommend them. So yeah, that's it. I mean, this is what I'm using for SSQ. I mean, not exclusively because sometimes I'll use the NACs or the Revox as well, depending what people ask for and how many copies they want. But so far it's taken off great. So if you want something a bit different like Candy Apple Blue did with this album in the bespoke packaging or, you know, this this Albanian black metal band did, they wanted something that looked really different and then they got it. Or even these guys, these guys, I really enjoyed this album. They wanted it to look like an old school mixtape. So that's what they got. So yeah, if you're a new artist or a label that wants something a bit different, done on these high quality decks or Nakamichi's then go along to the link at the end of this video. So hope you enjoyed that little tour of my duplication rig uh, and until next time happy taping please like and subscribe I'll see you later bye bye